Financial sanctions have hit Russia after its invasion of Ukraine. But it won't just be Russia feeling the bite, as supply uncertainties push up energy and grain prices. The Ukraine conflict couldn't have come at a worse time for the commodities markets and for the global economy for that matter, which is uh, in, still in the process of getting out of uh, the COVID doldrums. The immediate impact for the recovery in Asia will be, of course, related to inflation. Uh, because of rising energy costs, uh, I expect greater inflationary pressure across Asia. The war has cut off wheat supplies from Ukraine, known as the breadbasket of Europe. Ukraine is the fifth largest exporter of wheat globally. Asian countries are generally huge importers of energy, and also uh, many of them are, are food. Even Indonesia, I think, uh, imports 40% uh, of its grain from the Ukrainian uh, from the Ukrainian peninsula. So, uh, what we can expect to see is higher fuel prices, obviously, but also higher food prices as well. And there's even if that war was to end tomorrow, that wouldn't change that outcome. Following the invasion, oil prices hit their highest level in eight years and have continued to rise further. What we see is the market pricing in the fear, the risk of major supply, and you know, Russia being the, the largest oil producer in the, in the world right now, uh, the biggest natural gas supplier to Europe. So, you know, what happens if these supplies are disrupted? The major energy consuming, energy importing countries are a, a collateral damage in this war. There's not much they can do. You know, it's going to be extremely painful for the man on the street, um, for the economic growth uh, post COVID, for the central banks, for the governments, is just a major headache. We estimated that every $1 increase in crude oil price, uh, spot prices is associated on average um, with an additional five basis points to headline inflation rate. Uh, so, so this means that a $10 increase in crude prices will add half a percentage point to consumer inflation rate. Sectors that might be hit harder include oil and gas investments and aviation, which was just picking up with the reopening of borders. Although we can travel now, uh, those airfares are definitely going higher and they're going higher straight away. So holidays are going to cost a lot more money. Uh, so travel and leisure, uh, discretionary spending, yeah, higher oil prices feeds into the entire value chain, be it transport, manufacturing of plastics or other materials, and energy as well. So uh, transportation is probably going to suffer as well. So can one say that we have seen the peak of oil prices um, with regard to Ukraine? Certainly not. There is plenty of scope still for this conflict to become much worse. Some sectors will weather the crisis better, particularly those with strong pricing power. The obvious ones are food, supermarkets, we all have to eat, especially in Singapore, and we have to pay the price for that inelastic price. I guess you can't go past energy companies as well. We need to keep the lights on. We need to keep our internet going. We need to have our utilities, our water running. So these companies, these boring companies that people don't really pay a lot of attention to most of the time, they're going to be the consistent winners in a situation like this. One thing to watch, China's next move. I'm not quite sure if China's going to be the great friend that Vladimir Putin hopes it was going to be uh, if the going gets tough. And certainly if things escalate there, then China's going to really struggle. So. Yeah, in the short term, China may make some gains, but they need to be careful that they don't torpedo some long-term trading relationships because of that. Russia is an important supplier of energy commodities to China, will remain so in the future. If you talk about uh, political opportunism, this could be a opportunity for countries, you know, not just China, that are heavily dependent on, on Russia or, or energy imports other than, than the Western allies to try and uh, get closer to Russia. 
Experts say how long the conflict drags on for will determine how quickly the world can get back to focusing on the post-COVID new normal.